welcome to a video that is going to absolutely revolutionize your relationship with music making by introducing you to something I like to call musical mind. Let's go. Allow me to illustrate what I mean by musical mind by doing a series of very simple but profoundly illuminating experiments. Experiment number one. Let's go ahead and play Are You Sleeping in the key of C. And let's do it with our eyes open, looking at the keys. And let's do it without any particular intention, right? Just play it like you would normally play it. And don't try to be sneaky by trying to guess the direction that this video is going, right? Don't do that yet. So, here, here's one way we might play Are You Sleeping in the Key of C. And by the way, we can stop there. That's enough notes for our purposes for the moment. So go ahead, take a few seconds and play it yourself. Again, eyes open, looking at the keys. Just play it like you normally would. can stop there and now ask yourself four questions. First, what were you thinking about or not while you were playing? What were you experiencing or not while you were playing? What were you paying attention to? or not while you were playing? What was your brain doing or not while you were playing? Experiment number two. Are you sleeping? What we're gonna do is we're gonna play it first and then we're going to try to sing it the way we just played it. So here's here's one way that might go. Play. Sing. Or you can just hum hum it. You don't have to say the words. Let's give it a go. Are you sleeping? Are you That's enough for our purposes, so give that a go. Again, play it first and then sing it the way you just played it. And again, ask yourself those four questions. What were you thinking about or not while this was happening? What were you experiencing or not while this was happening? What were you paying attention to or not while this was happening? What was your brain doing or not while this was happening? Experiment number three. Let's find middle C again, the starting note. And now without playing beyond that, sing it out loud or hum it, it's fine. Are, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John? Sorry, I'm not a vocalist, so give that a go. Again, find the starting note. It's okay to find the starting note on the piano, but then just sing it out loud. And again, ask yourself, what were you thinking about or not while that was happening? 
What were you experiencing or not while that was happening? What were you paying attention to or not while that was happening? And what was your brain doing or not while that was happening? Experiment number four. Let's find the middle C, our starting note, and let's sing the melody exactly the way we would like to sing it. Just make it your own, right? So let, here's one rendition from me at this very moment. So, are, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John? And now, I'm going to play it the way I'm singing it. Ready? Go ahead, just give that a go. Again, sing it out loud, find the middle C, sing it out loud the way you would like it to sound, and then play it like you're singing it. And again, ask yourself, what were you thinking about or not while this is going on? What were you experiencing or not while this was going on? What were you paying attention to or not while this was going on? And what was your brain doing or not while this was going on? Experiment number five. Let's find middle C. Play it. Hum it out loud. Mm, or sing it out or hum. And then let's go ahead and continue singing the song. But this time we're not going to play it and we're not going to sing it out loud. We're going to try to sing the song exactly as we imagine it in our mind's ear. Right, so. And we can stop there. Now it's it's really a shame that I cannot possibly transfer what's going on in my brain out to other people, right? I mean, this is just the nature of the beast. But let's talk a little bit about that experience and ask ourselves those same four questions, right? What are we thinking about or not while this is going on? What are you experiencing or not while this is going on? What are you paying attention to or not? What is your brain doing or not while you are singing the sounds you want to make in your mind's ear. And if you're like most people, me included, you might find this to be an absolutely mind-blowing and brand new experience. And you may, have, may be wondering, well, why haven't I done this before? Why haven't my music teachers asked me to do this before? And for that reason, you have very little experience with this. And you might find it to be quite a challenge, right? It takes quite a bit of concentration to play that music in your mind's ear. And when I, when I say play that music, I'm talking about playing it as if you had a virtual audio recorder in your mind. Not all the theory and fingering and scales and all that stuff. No, but the sound, just the imagination of the sound in your mind's ear. That's the direction we're going. Got it? So stay with me. One more experiment to go where we're going to pull it all together. 
experiment number six. Here we're going to put it all together. Middle C, play it, hum it, sing it, and then stop playing it and stop singing it. But transfer the oral, A-U-R-A-L, image of that sound into your mind's ear. Ready? And then continue to sing, in quotes, sing the song in your mind's ear exactly the way you want it to sound and feel. Ready? So let's give it a go. And again, let's ask ourselves those four questions, right? What was I thinking about or not? What was I experiencing or not? What was I paying attention to or not? What was going through my brain or not? And here's something you're just going to have to trust me on. When I was playing that, right, we can argue about how artistic a rendition this was or not. But one thing I can assure you of is this. I was simply imagining the sound of the song in my mind's ear. That's it, using that little audio player in my musical brain. And I was allowing that to trigger my body motions. That's it. That's it. Sound, pure sound. Not theory, not counting, not letter names, none of that, right? The pure imagination of sound that was allowed to naturally trigger my body motions. And this is the big lesson of this video. This is the zone you want to get into. This is what I mean by playing with your musical mind. This is the very first lesson every music student should get right? That is to imagine the sounds you want to make in your mind's ear. And then if you studied and practiced the right way to simply allow your body to naturally express that musical intention. Now let's take a look at what is and is not happening when we are playing music using our musical mind. In other words, allowing that little audio player, our mind's ear, to be the leader. I made, I made a list. So, are you thinking, hmm, let's see, where's middle C? No. <laughs> By the way, I'm a terrible actor. Uh, are you thinking, hmm, let's see, G clef, every good boy does fine. No. Are you thinking, hmm, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. No. Are you thinking, thumb on middle C, uh, index finger on middle D, Middle finger on middle E. No! Are you thinking, play C. Stop. Think. Count 32 milliseconds. Play middle D. Stop. Think. Count 32 more milliseconds. Play E. Stop. Think. Count 32 milliseconds more. No! I mean, do you see how painful this is? Are you thinking, oh, sit up straight. Keep your hands still. Lift your fingers high. Yeah. By the way, all of which is horrible technique. So I'm not even suggesting, suggesting you do those things slowly, the right way. No, of course not. What you're doing when you're playing with your musical mind is you're simply imagining the sounds you want to make and allowing that to naturally trigger your body motions. 
indulge me now as I get a rant, R-A-N-T rant, out of my system. Unfortunately, almost all music education has students struggling with things like notation and in naming things and counting and doing things the right way, right in a way that's totally divorced from the perfectly organic process of making music. And so they never experience what it feels like to make beautiful sounds using the natural capabilities of their bodies. Right? They, they become so overwhelmed with fussing over these little details, right? Like scales and letter names and sophage and chords and the grand staff and all those symbols and eh, and they never are presented all of that information in a way that is useful. In other words, in a way that translates to performance in the way that human beings perform music. And that is to hear it and to express it with a certain physical choreography. And so what happens? Because they never experience the joy that comes with that. Because they've never even been asked to have a musical intention, right? And they've never been shown how to move their bodies in a way that expresses that musical intention. What happens is they get frustrated and they come to believe mistakenly that they are untalented and they quit. And how do I know this? Well, I was almost one of them, but I was just too stubborn and stuck it out and here I am and now you're stuck with me. Okay, rant complete. I feel better now. Now let's have a lot of fun by using our musical minds to play Are You Sleeping? in a variety of fun and interesting ways. And in doing so, we're going to go deep into really understanding the significance of what it means to play using your musical mind. All right? So, for this uh, demonstration, what I'm going to do is I am going to sing out loud, sing my musical intention as best I can as a non-vocalist. So, my apologies in advance for assaulting your ears. But also, I want to make the point that this musical intention that I'm going to express by singing out loud is what I would normally just sing in my mind's ear. Got it? But I want you to hear the significance of that intention and the power that that intention has to control what happens when I actually move my body. All right, so let's look at a few fun ways we could play Are You Sleeping? And let's begin with just kind of a, an average rendition, right? So I'm going to go, mm -hmm, are you, oops, let's find the right note. Are, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John. All right, so now let me sing this slower and see what happens. So let's see. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John. Right. Now, let me go a little bit faster. Now, I want to make a really important point here, right? When I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm not thinking, quote, thinking that, hmm, I am going to play the notes slower or I'm going to play the notes faster. No, I literally play them in my mind's ear. I actually play them slower 
and actually played them faster. So it's not just the notion of slower or faster. I'm actually playing that audio recorder or that audio player in my mind's ear. I'm actually adjusting the speed. Got it? Super. So let's go ahead. I got more here. Let's see. So let's go ahead and I'm going to play this at a whisper and let's see what happens. Now, I want to make a similar point to the one I made about changing the tempo. When I'm playing this, I'm not just thinking, hmm, play Are You Sleeping softer? No, I'm actually playing a whispering version in my mind's ear. You got it? So it's not just an abstract notion. I'm actually hearing the music at a whisper in my mind's ear. So let's uh, have some fun. Let's do another another version. Let's do like a basso profundo version. Mm, right? So I would go. Mm, oh, you sleep. I mean, kind of a silly version because it's not, you know, if we don't want to wake him up, you did just the opposite, right? So let's do another version. We're going to play it staccato. But again, I'm not going to be thinking, play Are You Sleeping Staccato? No, what I'm going to do is in my mind's ear, I'm going to be thinking, Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, right? That's what's going through my head. Not a notion but an actual sound. Now, uh, let's do one more thing and let's have even more fun by intentionally playing an awful version, meaning horrible dynamics, horrible timing, and see what happens, All right? So let's go, let's go. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, brother John. Hmm. And again, in every one of these cases, ask yourself, what's going on inside your head? What are you thinking about? What are you experiencing? What are you paying attention to? What is going on inside that musical brain? One more experiment to shine some light on the true nature of playing with musical mind. Let's do this. Let's as a musical intention, let's play Are You Sleeping loud and slow. Loudly and slowly. All right, so again, this is in my mind's ear, but I'm going to sing it out loud and play it out loud just so for illustration purposes. So let's do this. We're going to have that intention loud and slow. Are you Now, with that musical intention going through, try to play it fast and quietly. I'm not even going to do it. You know why? For one, I can't do it. And two, even if I could do it, why would I want to do it? But the point is this, and I invite you to try it. Do the experiment. Have a musical intention and see if you can intentionally not follow that intention. And I will guarantee you, you might mess up on accident, but you will not mess up on purpose. The caveat being, if you have a clear, clear musical intention playing in that little audio player in your mind's ear, your body cannot help but follow. Got it? So, time to wrap things up with my list of takeaways. Takeaway number one. 
If you want to play like an artist, you must play with your musical mind. In other words, you must allow your mind's ear to be the leader. Takeaway number two. Getting into this zone where you allow your mind's ear to be the leader is something you can and must practice. And so whether you're an improviser and play by ear or are playing from written music, you have to go beyond the symbols and you need to go beyond the theory and you need to play the music in that little audio player in your mind's ear and allow that to be your leader. Takeaway number three. If you study and practice the right things the right way, that musical intention in your mind's ear will automatically trigger the appropriate muscle memory trace that seamlessly and reliably expresses that musical intention. Takeaway number four, this meditative state where your mind's ear is the leader is an active, not a passive process. In other words, This state of mind is one where we're not just passively listening to the music in our mind's ear, but we are actively recreating, actively singing the music in our mind's ear. Takeaway number five. When you study and practice music, the ultimate goal is not to store the music as a sequence of data, but to store it as a unified, coherent expression of sound. Takeaway number six, when you have a clear musical intention and allow your mind's ear to be the leader, something magical happens. Everything, and I mean everything, the notes, rests, uh, articulations, timing, rhythm, phrasing, dynamics, fingering, choreography, all of that becomes expertly organized by your subconscious mind. And so you don't have to fuss over all those details. All you have to do is focus on the musical intention. Takeaway number seven. The ultimate goal of studying and practicing, in other words, to put music inside of you, consists of two main processes. The first process is to develop a crystal clear musical intention. What do you want the music to sound and feel like? And the second process is to experiment in order to discover a choreography. In other words, how you move your body in a way that reliably expresses that musical intention. Let's close this video out with the takeaway of takeaways. And that is this. Every time you sit down to do something musically, whether it's putting music in, putting music out, you know, practicing, studying music theory, performing, whether you do so from written music or you play by ear or you're an improviser, no matter what, always play with your musical mind. In other words, always allow your mind's ear to be the leader. Not some of the time, not most of the time, all of the time. 
And if you do so, I guarantee you, you are going to take your playing to the super genius level. And you're going to surprise yourself uh, with the level of artistry and competence and confident, confidence that you are going to be able to play with. I guarantee it. And I know you can. You know how I know you can? Because I'm doing it. And I'm not that talented. I just love music enough to, you know, suffer for it a little bit. And I know you love music enough too, so go get them. I know you can do it. I know you can.